we have a big announcement from Salesforce. Salesforce just announced what they're calling Einstein GPT, and that's a generative AI tool for Salesforce's market-leading CRM. So this tool is currently in closed pilot, but what it does is it creates content across marketing, sales, and service use cases using the same types of generative AI we've seen in some of the leading market tools like ChatGPT, Dolly2, what have you. So Salesforce says that Einstein GPT will actually infuse Salesforce's proprietary AI models with generative AI technology from an ecosystem of partners and real-time data from the Salesforce data cloud. And for example, Einstein GPT could do something like generate personalized emails for salespeople to send to customers, generate specific responses for customer service professionals, or more quickly answer customer questions and generate targeted content for marketers so they can increase their campaign response rates. And it can also even auto-generate code for developers. In the same breath as this announcement, the company also announced a $250 million generative AI fund through its venture arm. So obviously last week, we talked about HubSpot's ChatSpot, which is a similar tool for the HubSpot CRM. So this announcement is coming right on the heels of that as we see these big platform providers get into the generative AI game. So first up, Paul, I wanted to ask you, with all these announcements, are we seeing the birth of a smart CRM category? Yeah, that would appear to definitely be the case. And But anybody who's followed us for a long time knows what we always say is AI is just smarter technology. So the reality is every software category, there's going to be a smart X category to it. Like everything is going to become smarter. Everything's going to be infused with AI. So this seemed like a very obvious starting point for um, these platforms. So again, as you mentioned, Darmesh and HubSpot introduced uh, ChatSpot last Monday. So that was a topic of conversation. And then this was backed up on Tuesday. A um, couple of things jumped out to me here. The generative AI fund in particular, I find interesting. So it was a $250 million fund. They announced an integration kind of right out, out of the box with OpenAI uh, for this Einstein GPT. But two of their first four investments were in other language model companies with Anthropic and Cohere, which are two names you've, you're probably familiar with if you've listened to the podcast. So, it, you know, language is obviously the lead here. When we're talking about generative AI, it, it covers language, images, video, audio, and code would be the other one that maybe we haven't historically thrown in there. But I, I think we talk about generative AI without talking about code. So, you know, they're obviously making the major play right now into language because that was what happened, you know, last year, 2022 was sort of the year of language um, as well as image. But, you know, I think we're starting to see that infused video, I think in 2023 is going to be, you know, on par with what we saw with image and language last year. So, yeah, it just it seems like an obvious play. I'm curious to see how quickly these things roll out because even chat spot is still sort of in, you know, limited rollout. I think Darmesh had said he was doing like a hundred people a day, but then I, I thought I saw a tweet over the weekend that he was going to, anyone on the wait list was going to have access this week, maybe. So it seems like chat spots really, you know, starting to roll out as well. Um, but I think this is going to be rapid innovation. We're going to see a lot of this stuff playing out this year, but it makes perfect sense. CRM marketing automation, uh, that stuff's going to get smarter for sure. So obviously the AI capabilities both depend on kind of your own use cases and what you're using the platform for, but at a really high level, could you maybe walk us through some examples of what kind of impact tools like Einstein GPT or ChatSpot would have on kind of my daily or weekly work as a marketer using a CRM system? I think it's to be determined until you get in there and see what these things are actually capable of. You know, there's lots of promises being made or at least presenting what the use cases could be. The question becomes, do they actually fulfill that promise? Like, does it actually do what it's proposing to do? So I think there's going to be a lot of experimentation to see if these tools are really as far along as the brand messaging makes them sound. My guess is they're not. Um, usually there's a bit of a product development curve here that has to happen. These are going to be, you know, Chad spot to Darmesh's credit. He's positioning it as an alpha product. So it's like, don't, you know, it's not going to do exactly what you think it's going to do all the time, but it's all, it's going to be about rapid innovation. 
the same time, you know, I've talked with some larger enterprises in the last week or two, um, in particular, since the Einstein thing came out, but we've always told, especially bigger enterprises to start with your core tech stack. When you're thinking about AI adoption and, and like scaling AI in your organization, you always start with the core companies that are already there. So if you use Salesforce or HubSpot or Oracle or whatever it is, whatever your core stack is, specifically your CRM, you want to start with those companies and talk to your reps and say, do you have smarter features we should be using? Like, are, are there AI capabilities in the product that we aren't using that can make us more efficient today without having to go and complicate our tech stack by going and finding five or 10 new tools to do all these different use cases? So I think the biggest impact is going to be the integration of these capabilities into your workflows with the existing technologies you use. Um, the other thing is you might get in there and realize, wow, I, I wish it worked the way they said it would work. Maybe since it's not, I need to go find a tool that does do this. And so, you know, it really helps you start to visualize the way that AI can be infused into your daily workflow. And these products are going to get better really fast. Um, you know, we're talking about these things are being built largely on two-year-old technology. So if you look at OpenAI and the integration of like ChatGPT through their APIs into these products, that tech is a couple of years old. Now it's improving and we're getting, you know, incremental improvements to it from what OpenAI is releasing. But the expectation is in the coming months, we're going to see some leaps forward in these capabilities and just going to kind of keep resetting what these platforms are able to do. So that's kind of tackling what your marketing practitioner should be thinking about when it comes to a smarter CRM. If I'm kind of a leader or an executive just now seeing these features come out, thinking about my database, my CRM system, and the third parties I may work with in terms of CRM support. I mean, that could be anyone from a developer in Salesforce, HubSpot, agencies that specialize in these platforms and getting more value out of them. What should I be thinking about here? Do I need to be evolving my approach? Yeah, I, I mean, it's going to be a really interesting time for director level and above to be trying to think through all this stuff because mm -hmm. it does have an impact on your tech stack. It has an impact on your own team and maybe the need to upskill or, you know, acquire some, some new talent. And it certainly has an impact on your partner ecosystem, specifically if you work with outside agencies and consultants. So, you know, right now it's nice to have an agency or consultant that understands AI. Mm. Uh, I see that quickly becoming a need to have. And the reality is there just aren't that many agencies and consultants that understand this stuff. So it, it's going to be a challenging environment as we go through this kind of very disruptive phase where we're trying to understand this stuff. But like I said, it, it's going to become essential really fast. There's a lot of pressure on marketing and business leaders to figure this stuff out right now. And it's at all levels. I mean, we've talked with lots of uh, leaders at different size organizations. Everyone is trying to figure this out. Now, some of them think they're trying to figure out ChatGPT, like we've talked about before. That ChatGPT is just a tool in, in this massive ecosystem of AI applications and capabilities. And so people are kind of misguided in thinking that if they solve for AI writing, that, that that's it, they've solved for AI. Um, so yeah, I still think that there's a massive gap in knowledge in the marketplace where these company and you know business leaders aren't even sure what they're solving for. Like they don't know what AI actually is. They don't know what business problems it can really solve. In many cases, they just know it can now write content and they're trying to like scramble to figure that part out. Mm. But, but that's really just the entry point for a lot of people. And so, yeah, I think leaders are going to struggle a little bit. That's why, you know, at our marketing AI conference in July, we have an op two optional workshops. Um, the one is applied AI, which is you're a practitioner and you need to find use cases and tools right now to start yep. testing. And the other is the strategic AI leader. And that's the premise of that one that I'm actually going to be leading, which is like, what do we do about this? What's the impact on operations, on workflow, on talent? Mm -hmm. on overall business strategy. And so I think that's the stuff that's critical in 2023 for people to be solving for.